The Infiniti FX, Infiniti's entry into the hugely competitive mid-size crossover SUV. So what Infiniti offers that differs from the other manufacturers it's, is their inspired performance name. Uh, this is one of the sportiest offerings you can find if you're looking for a mid-size crossover SUV. Now, the downsides to it are is not as practical as uh, vehicles such as the Cadillac SRX that I showed you guys or Lexus RX. Now, this 2009 FX35 actually represents the second generation. This car first came out uh, as a first generation back in 2003 as the FX35. And there's two models, the FX35 and the FX50, which is the V8 model. They're going to be re reviewed separately just because this is the V6, the other one's the V8. Um, 2009 is the first model year of the second generation. And, you know, when the first generation first came out, uh, I remember a lot of people were associating the styling of the vehicle as the Bionic Cheetah. Now, here's Generation 2. A lot of people now are calling it something to do with a marine creature. The Atomic Catfish is the one I've read quite often. It probably has something to do with the curvy styling of it. You know, the, the grill is kind of interesting with those weird little waves in it, the headlights. I mean, it's all, it all is, you know, an evolution of the first generation, which already looked pretty radical. This one looks even even di more different. Uh, 2013 Infiniti actually updated the vehicle. Uh, it's now called the FX37, just because Infiniti just replaced their 3.7 V6. Because it's Infiniti, it's available with many complicated options. You can see this one has the good-looking and gorgeous 20-inch wheels that are part of the deluxe touring package. So this one's pretty much a fully loaded model. And uh, it's a really interesting styled vehicle. The real vehicle that really competes with this car is kind of just the BMW X6 in terms of, you know, styling, because it's kind of got that hunkered down, coupe-like look, and it's not as practical. But both vehicles are extremely fun to drive. Now, because this is an Infiniti, you get uh, their smart key access system and standard equipment. So here is their key that you just have to keep on your person to lock the doors. Just push this button right here, and that locks the doors. To unlock it, it's a little bit older. You have to push it again and that unlocks the doors. Now coming inside, this one actually has a quite appealing looking brown leather interior. The seats have a very nice high quality pattern to it. The leather is really nice. Now, the step in height of this vehicle is perfect. You do have to duck your head a little bit just because of the low roof line. But you can see with the color contrasting with the brown, the black, it's all it's a very premium ambience. Infinity has always had a very nice cabin relative to their, to their competition. And you can see there's the button to start the engine. Just put the, push the brake in, push the button. It's amazing how you get into, every, at least how I get into every Infinity, they all sound the same. Now, closing the door, you do have automatic up-down for just the driver and front passenger. Surprise, it's not for the back passengers as well, but it's whatever. Uh, the interior of this vehicle is very nice, like I said. You have soft-touch materials on the dash. It's all soft-touch. Even though this is two p different pieces, everything is soft-touch. Soft-touch materials actually carries down over down the sides as well. Uh, the fit and finish is good. This is a luxury SUV. It's not the leather wrap stitching that... Uh, that Lexus or the the Cadillac gave you, but it's a very appealing design still. Uh, here's your Infinity Center stack. This one does have your around you monitoring system. As you can see, it's a top trim. So you can see, I really like that top down view where it shows you a 360 degree view of what's around the vehicle. It's very nifty. You can see this one also has your navigation system. It is a touch screen and you can use the Infinity controller. The screen looks a little on the dated side to me, but I have to remember this is an 09, so three model years. Now, um, the steering wheel on the other hand is very nice. It practically comes off of the G37 or the 350Z. You have paddle shifters which are mounted the right way. They're mounted on the steering column and they're also mounted with, they're also lined with um, leather and it's magnesium. It's real, it's real metal. It's a very nice paddle shifts, paddle shifters and I think every manufacturer needs to use that. Seven speed automatic is new for 2009. We're replacing the, the five speed automatic. Definitely needed to do it because five speeds is looking a little long in the tooth. Uh, you do have heated and cooled seats with this vehicle, and you also have a snow mode. Uh, coming to the club, the center stack, center console here, you have two-level storage, and you have a iPod and your uh, power port in there. Coming to the glove compartment, it is lined with felt, and it's a pretty decent size. It's it's uh, damped as well. The door panel of this vehicle is very high quality, as expected. It's soft touch right there, nice aluminum trim, chrome door handles, leather stitching everywhere. It's all soft touch, even down here in this portion of the door panels. There's all really nice materials in here. That's kind of expected of this class of vehicle. Now, coming to the rear seat of the FX, it's a little bit on the smaller side compared to other, you know, like the Lexus uh, competitors. But stepping inside, you do have a decent step in. The legroom is okay. This is better than a G. And you do have vents back here. The floor is pretty high. You have a nice high center tunnel here. So this is mostly for just for, for two people back here. You do get a nice armrest right here 
with a cup holders and a little bit of storage. The roof line is a little bit low, but it's not as low as the X5. And you have dual map pockets as well. Very nice quality leather in here. Shutting the door, you have the same soft touch materials from the, the front and really nice. I love this trim piece right here. It's just really classy looking and the wood looks good. It's all soft touch even down here. Although there is no storage in the lower compartments of the rear doors. Now coming to the back, oddly enough, this vehicle does not have a power tailgate. It's kind of unexcused, unacceptable in a luxury crossover SUV like this. Um, but the cargo area is very small. This is where you have kind of a trade-off. That hunkered down shape definitely limits the cargo capacity. The seats fold down in a pretty simple mechanism. You just pull on this lever here and they pretty much just fold down for you. There's something blocking the way that's why it didn't shut. Um, and really nice, you know, trimmed out. But it's very small cargo capacity, so make sure that you're okay with the lack of cargo space in this vehicle. Now under the curvilicious hood, you'll find an, a familiar motor. This is Nissan Infiniti's 3.5 liter VQ35HR, the high revving motor. Uh, makes two, uh, 303 horsepower in the FX, 262 pound-feet of torque. A little bit less torque than last year's model, but it's up 28 horsepower from the 2008 model. The engine sounds pretty good actually in this car, I must admit. It's a pretty raw V6, a lot of people actually like the noises it makes. I prefer a little bit more refinement, but I actually thought the V6 sounded pretty nice in that exhaust. It moves the vehicle out well, uh, much quicker than that SRX I showed you. So let's take a look at how it all works. So now for the sportier end of the midsize luxury crossover, let's take a look at how Infiniti's FX35 drives. You know, these luxury SUVs really spoil me every time I get I get into them. Get into them. I'm not sure if I'll ever own one. Maybe I will one day. But um, one of the things I'm noticing right away is if you have really short legs, uh, this vehicle, the gas pedal is really far away. I kind of had to scoot up really far, and the pedals don't adjust. Also, I kind of missed that. The pedals for me seemed a little placed a little too far. I'm five foot seven. Maybe I just have really short legs. And I think the the pedals are too far. But anyways, it's a, it's crazy how you know the SRX. I just drove that and they're in the same class, but this car feels like it's an entirely different class on its own. The car just feels much more sporty to drive than the SRX does. It's crazy how different the two vehicles feel. The V6 just has a very racy noise. It's crazy. And it has so much more pull with 303 horsepower. This thing really just takes off. It has way more power than the SRX. The handling of the vehicle is also quite excellent as well. I mean, it's very, it kind of just feels like a, a Infiniti G on stilts. Uh, the steering is very responsive. The one thing though is the 20 inch wheels, the ride of this vehicle is very harsh. Uh, it's much more harsh than that SRX with the same 20 inch wheels. But at the same time, uh, if you're if you're looking for that combination of sportiness, you're gonna probably be okay with the ride trade-off. I mean, if you're going from a G, that's why Infiniti built this car is they want people to trade in their Gs for this car. You're going from a G to this car, you won't be bothered by it at all. Uh, the V6 though, for me, has plenty of power. I don't see any reason to go to the V8 unless really you just want it for bragging rights. But everything else about this vehicle is pretty comfortable. The seats are excellent. They feel more supportive and comfortable than the SRX for me. And uh, this, the ride is okay when you're not hitting bumps, but when you hit a bump, you better brace yourself for a, a nice rough shock. You know, even though this is a 2009 model, it's amazing how new this vehicle still feels. It doesn't feel like it has, it has about 26,650 miles on it. It doesn't feel like it has any miles on it at all. It pretty much just feels like a new car. Now, um, the one thing that I'm probably never gonna get used to is the way this the visibility looks right here. You have this weird curvy hood that just looks awkward to me. I think it looks really ugly from this angle, only just because I'm not a fan of curvy styling. But in terms of the rest of the visibility, uh, it's crazy to me that you have all this, you know, around view monitoring camera stuff, but there's no blind spot information on this vehicle. You can see there's actually a little blind spot mirror that the previous owner put on this car. But I just don't understand why Infinity put all these cameras around the vehicle and they forgot to put in a blind spot information. Just like an idiot light to tell you that there's somebody in your blind spot, this vehicle could use it because you do have some pretty good blind spots in this vehicle just because of the curvis, their curvaceous styling of the vehicle. Now, the one thing I, one of my favorite features is definitely these paddle shifters. I think every vehicle needs to have these paddle shifters. They're pretty much, they engage anytime you want them, just pull it and then 
car blips the throttle on downshifts, it's perfect. Infinity does a really good job with uh, their automatic downshifting. And despite being on 20 inch wheels, the turning radius is actually quite small for this vehicle. Seven speed auto is really quick about its shifts. This vehicle is potent. So anyways, if you guys are in the market for a luxury crossover SUV and you're leaning more toward the sporty side, I highly suggest going to your local Infinity dealer and test driving this vehicle because it'll be quite surprising and you'll be quite impressed with it. But anyways guys, hope you've enjoyed my quick overview of this 09 Infinity FX35. If you're in the market for a vehicle like this, check one out. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys later.